Swift, 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 Swifters, we are going to cover showing and hiding keyboard here, and in this lesson we'll also cover good user experience, the responder chain, becoming first responder, ending editing and hiding the keyboard, the UI text field delegate, and the text field should return function. Ready to learn big? Let's proceed. Now we want to make some changes to the user interface. If you click on an existing item, you likely don't want to go up and edit the name of the to-do item right away. You might want to change the date or maybe enable or disable a timer. But if you click on to add a new item, the very first thing you're going to want to do is to give that item a name. And so what should happen is you should have the keyboard up and the cursor should be flashing inside of name field. The user shouldn't have to click a second time to get the cursor in there and get the keyboard to show up. So that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to make sure as soon as you click on the plus button to add a new record, the keyboard's going to pop up and you can start typing in the name of that item right away. So we'll set this up and we'll do a few other things just to make sure that our user experience is optimal. Now before we can get there, let's introduce a few concepts before we begin. iOS handles events according to what's called a responder chain. That means that an object that's the focus of control will handle an event. Otherwise, if it can't handle the event, it'll pass it up to the next object in the chain. Now if you want to learn more about this, Apple's got some good documentation online, but there are only a few things that concern us now. Now to show the keyboard, we're most concerned with the first responder. And specifically, if the first responder is a text field or a text view, the focus of control will be put in that field, the cursor will flash, and the device keyboard will show. Now we make an object the first responder by referring to the IB outlet and using the become first responder method. Want to set up the name field so that you can start typing right away? Call name field dot become first responder. Want to switch over to the note view? Call note view dot become first responder. We can also hide the keyboard and stop any text field or text view editing by calling self.view.endEditing and passing in true. So if we want the keyboard to show and the user to be able to start typing a name in the field whenever they enter a new to-do note, we'll just go inside a to-do detail table view controller. And remember, in view did load, if the user pressed on plus to get here, they're adding a new record, then we don't have an existing to-do item. So the to-do item equals nil. We'll add inside if to-do item equals nil, name field dot become first responder open and close parens that's it if we build and run and click on an existing record we haven't changed the behavior at all so no keyboard shows up but if we go over and press the plus button to add a record the name field becomes first responder it's the focus of control the cursor's flashing in there and the keyboard is showing now if you're ever in a situation where you know your cursor is inside a text field or text view and the keyboard isn't showing up in the simulator remember shift command k should bring it up Next, why don't we improve the user experience for the return button on the keyboard? So if you're in the name field and you press the return on the keyboard, it currently does nothing. We could do a few things. We could dismiss the keyboard. We could save, but I think a better user experience would be if we move down into the notes field so the user could enter a note. And notice what happens when the user presses return inside of a text view. It acts as a line feed because you can add multiple lines of text inside of a text view. So how do we respond to the return key being pressed? Well, the UI text field itself doesn't know what to do, but it does know when the return key has been pressed and it can send a message to any of its delegates. Well, if we adopt the UI text field delegate protocol and then we set name field dot delegate equal to self, self is gonna be that view controller, the to do detail table view controller where we're working, we can write a function text field should return that's gonna receive a return event when the return key has been pressed inside of name field and we can set the note view to become first responder that'll automatically take the focus out of the name field put it in the note view but keep the keyboard up you got to make sure that you return true as well though pretty easy let's do it and we'll do it in an extension so we're in to do detail table view controller so let's go to the end add a new extension for to do detail table view controller make sure that you select the right view controller then colon ui text field delegate open and close curlies and before we forget, let's go up to view did load and set name field dot delegate equal to self. And we can do it any place after super view did load. Then when we've set name field dot delegate equal to self, let's go back down to the extension and let's control click right on where it says UI text field delegate. If we select jump to definition, we can see all of the methods that are available to any class that adopts this particular protocol. And by looking through this, we can see the one that we want. This one right down here that says text field should return. In comments, we can see what it does. It's called when return key is pressed, return no to ignore. It should say return false because it's a Boolean. We're going to return true though because we don't want to ignore it so in the upper left of this code window up here we'll go back to where we previously were we're back in our extension i'll type in text field should return press enter to accept this xcode will add the stub then enter note view dot 
become first responder, press enter on that. It should add the open and close parens at the end and then just return true. Build and run and it should work exactly like we expect. Press plus to add a new to-do item, name fields the first responder, press the return key, and boom, we move right down into the note view. Nice! Now if we press return again, we're no longer inside of name field, so name field isn't going to send messages to its delegate. We're just going to get returns inside of the notes view, which is what we want. Now we also want to dismiss the keyboard when the user taps outside of a UI text field or a UI text view. And this chunk of code will almost work. So if we touch anywhere on the table view area outside of the field or view, the keyboard will dismiss, but it doesn't work automatically if we tap directly on a UI switch or the UI date picker. In order to get those things to work, we're going to add a little bit of code to the IB action. It's this line here that we referred to earlier, true. That'll force the keyboard to dismiss if it's open. So let's do that. This first chunk of code goes right up here in view did load. Again, we can put it anywhere after super view did load. I'll put a comment in here to remind you what this code does. Hide the keyboard if we tap outside of a field or view. And first we'll define a tap gesture recognizer. So we'll say let tap equals UI tap gesture recognizer. And we can see in code completion, it says it's a gesture recognizer that looks for single or multiple taps. Open parens and select the option with target. Then for the target, put in self.view. And for the action, what we're gonna put in is pound signed selector, open parentheses, UI view dot end, and you'll see end editing shows up. Select that one. So inside the parens, it should automatically put in a dash and a colon. Why are we doing this? Look at the description and code completion. Causes the view or one of its embedded text fields, it should also say text view, to resign the first responder status. That'll get rid of the keyboard. That's exactly what we want to do if you tap anywhere on the main view of the view controller. Perfect. Press return, accept this. Now in the next line, we're gonna say tap dot and then select cancels touches in view. Now the description and code completion isn't very useful here, but you'll almost always include this statement and set it equal to false. And what that will allow you to do is if you ever use a scrollable table view with this little block of code to dismiss the keyboard, it will make sure that any taps will pass through and allow you to select a table view cell. And now that we set up this tap gesture recognizer, we've got to add it to our main view. So we'll just say self.view.addTapGestureRecognizer, and in between the parens, we'll pass in tap. That's it. Build and run. Let's see how it works. Here we go. Click on plus to add a record. Keyboard is showing up. Click in this space right under name field. The keyboard dismisses, just like we wanted. Back in name field. First responder is set. Keyboard shows up. Click outside again. Keyboard goes away. Click in the notes view. The view is first responder. Keyboard automatically shows. Go away, show up, go away, show up. Everything is looking good. Now the one thing that we don't see is if we click on the switch or if we click on the date picker, the keyboard still remains up. So we want to change that, but we already saw how to do that in the slide. Let's go ahead and get that working too. So let's get back into our code and I'm gonna jump bar down to reminder switch changed. And this is where we put in self.view.endediting true that will resign any active first responders and get rid of any keyboards. And we're gonna copy this line and we're gonna paste it right into date picker changed as well. And we should be good to go. Build and run, let's check everything out. Plus to add a new to-do item, keyboard is showing because name field is first responder. Click on the switch, keyboard goes away, nice. Click on the notes view, it's first responder, keyboard shows up. Move the date picker, keyboard goes away. Now there's one more thing we wanna finish before we're done. When I type a new name in here, the save button should be active, but if I've got nothing in the name field, the save button should be disabled so that you don't enter a blank to do item. So let's fix that. And we saw this technique in one of our earlier apps. First, we're gonna create an IB action for the UI text field that we wanna monitor. We're gonna set the action to editing changed. We're gonna check the size of the text fields dot text property. And if the count of that string is greater than zero, we'll enable the button, otherwise we'll disable it. And this is what our code's gonna look like. So let's set it up. So let's get into assistant editor mode. We'll click on to do detail table view controller and then option click on the main storyboard. Make a little bit of room right at the end of our main class. We'll control drag over from the field. Make sure that you've clicked on name field. Drag over, let go. We're gonna create a new IB action. Set the type to UI text field. Set the event to editing changed. And let's give this the name of text field editing changed. Click connect. Then we'll say if sender, remember sender is gonna be the field we dragged over from, that's our name text field, dot text, question mark dot count is greater than zero. That means if there's something in that text field, 
open and close curlies. Then we'll enable the save bar button. Save bar button dot is enabled equals true. Else open and close curlies. Save bar button dot is enabled equals false. Build and run. Ugh, bad me. Error here. I should have force unwrapped that text field so we can just go ahead and click on the last fix. Xcode changes sender dot text question mark to sender dot text exclamation point. Let's build and run again. Look, the save button isn't disabled initially. Can you think what I need to do? Think updating the user interface. Pause. And resume. Did you get it? We need to call the same code inside of text field editing changed as part of our update user interface. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the code inside here, cut it out, make another function, and call that function from both inside text field editing changed and also at the end of update user interface. So right after prepare for segue, I'm going to create a new function. I'll call it func enable disable save button. I'll give that one parameter, which is text. It's going to be a string. That's what I want to check to see if it's got a count greater than zero. Open and close curlies. I'm going to paste in the code that I just cut out of the other action. I'll replace if sender.text exclamation point dot count with just if text dot count that's the value i'm passing in now back down here in our ib action for text field editing changed i'll call my new function enable disable save button pressed i want to pass in name fields text property so the parameter i'll pass in as text is going to be sender dot text exclamation point now the reason the save button wasn't initially disabled, even though there was nothing inside of name field, was because when we ran through view did load and we called update user interface, we didn't check to see if there was anything in name field and if there wasn't disable the save button. But we can do that now because we've got our new function. Right at the end of update user interface, which is called from view did load, we can say enable disable save button and pass in name field dot text. And we can force unwrap that with an exclamation point. That's it. Build and run, click plus to add a new to-do item, and ho oh, ho, the save button is disabled because we've got nothing in the name field. But as soon as we begin to type, the save button is enabled. I highlight the text in name field and backspace, the save button is disabled again. Type a letter enabled, backspace disabled, type a letter enabled, backspace disabled, looking good. Everything else is looking good, click in the text field, keyboard shows, click outside of the text field. First responders resigned, keyboard goes away. Swifter, everything is looking magnificent. You've designed a very nice user experience for the users of your to-do list app. You should feel good about your skills. Congratulations and stay Swifty.